All right, so tell me, you, you, you're, you get to the VA, and what, what happened? It was like, wow, what's going on? Because like for years, I wondered, like, what's happening inside the building? Because I literally stayed like a few blocks from it. It was like, okay, maybe I know somebody, maybe I don't, you know. So I go in, it's like the process just going in, the first thing, window number one. I was like, oh, well, maybe it might be too bad. It's like the military just might be a little slow. Window number one for the ID card and window number two to sign in and just the process they did. It was like a whole bunch of, okay, we got this, now hurry up and wait. So I was like, wow. But what I didn't know, it was uh, they had like social workers that were dealing specifically with returning to Iraq and Afghanistan veterans. My problem came, I was like the youngest one to come back. So it was like a big thing for them. And you know, and still to this day, I'm still the youngest person in the hospital. And it's crazy because they all started looking at me like, okay, we got something new and we're gonna try to fix it. My problem came when like the doctors would be sitting there telling me something out of a book that they went to school for versus they never wore the uniform or been deployed or been in the sandbox. And they suggested that this is what you should do, this is what you should do, and this is good for you. Everything don't really work the same for everybody. And you know, it wasn't being funny with them, it was just like Vietnam era was Vietnam era. You know, this is something totally different. It was like better avenues versus by me being young, they were sitting there like, what do y'all do now at range? I was like, we work every day. <laughs> you know, it's the same, it's just sometimes you do PT and you don't. My unit was real big on I mean, you know, first on the we still had to do PT. And you know, I was still in that mind frame, you know, you soldier, you tough. This is the second part of what's going on. And it wasn't a money issue with me. It was more like, man, I'm hurt. I need this to be taken care of, you know, versus how you crazy, you know. And I really didn't get no help until I got into a fight in the drive through at the front of the VA. I went around in the pharmacy, but it was some veterans, um, Tony Alexander and uh, another guy, Sarge. They just got up. You know, they come and grab me like, okay, youngster, we know exactly what you're going through. But, you know, if you don't calm down, you know, you're going to be in this kind of trouble. By me coming home, I always fought. I was like, man, you know what, you can take me to jail. Because basically by then, it was like, I done had it. Because no one was telling me nothing. It was like a roller coaster. You know, go here, go there, go there. And then you wouldn't hear nothing. Maybe you get something in the mail, like, you need to show up this time of day. But like I say, when they found me, you know, I was out there beating some guy, you know, to the ground. I had just snapped and lost it. And um, to the point where I like, go get the um, MPs. I wouldn't care, I'll fight them too. And, you know, and it was just like, you know when the older person, when they tell you something, you, you can hear it in their voice, they weren't joking with you, like, young brother, you need to chill out and come with us. Like, the elite dudes or something, you know, it was funny, but he like, he told me twice, he's like, if I tell you again, I'm gonna crack you across the head with this cane. You know, I was still on um, to that subject, like, man, I'll fight you too. I'll fight all y'all, you know. And then, you know, Saw was a pretty big guy, you know, when he stood up out the wheelchair, I knew it was serious, and I really needed some help. And from that point, he put me in the right contact with people, because um, I had Ms. Michelle Williams. She really looked out for me and my daughter, you know, through my hard times. Like, everything that versus the military would show me, here you go, this is what you have to do. Just prefabricated for me. She was the one doing it for me, and still like to this day. So it started getting better for me. And, um, just like talking to uh, Tony Alexander, he was like, man, come check these classes out. I'm like, what classes? You know, the PTSD classes, learn how to deal with it. Cause I really never got debriefed. But like, I went to the first class, man, I was like, man, this up for crackheads and stuff and alcoholics and all of the good stuff, you know? So I wasn't really feeling it. I just basically like, man, I ain't getting nothing out of these. Stood up and left and never went back, you know? I ended up back in there, you know, I got into a brawl, ended up facing three felonies, two misdemeanors, you know, just went from like, wow, man, my life is about to be tight to the federal penitentiary, you know. I really didn't see that I was that bad, you know, because prior to all this, I had started self-medicating, you know, afraid to take the pills. They were just throwing me so many pills and take this and Zoloft and all other kind of stuff. And it was like, wow, man, this is kidding me to the point to where I was just, Real drag down, didn't want to do nothing. I always thought about just fighting people, just fight, 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 real angry. It started taking real toll, you know, like my daughter. You know, she just turned five, and it's like she got the angry attitude like me. And it's crazy, and I feel bad about it. You know, so I was just like, I turned this, you know, started self medication. 
smoking marijuana, you know, TAC. But like, I had smoked for so long when I got out, like all of the time, you know, my tolerance level was just like real high. You know, I had to keep smoking, but like, like I was cool when I was, you know, I was smoking. Like, when I was nobody come bother me, you know, or even if I knew I had to go deal with the VA, you know, I would get high before I go and just sit down in the car, roll up. And I respect the place so much, I threw it out before I roll up on the property and, you know, gone in like, dang, man, it's another day. Got to deal with these stupid people. They don't understand me no way why I got to go, you know. And at that time, I think I was getting like maybe 974. And that was it, trying to survive off of I was in like this housing project. Um, just this housing project, uh, housing crisis. And, you know, the program was pretty cool, but it wasn't what it should have been. And it was like, they started doing the UAs and everything. I was like, cool, I can beat them, you know. Start shift jail and all the good stuff to try to pass it. Then it got to the point that, you know what, man, I'm a veteran, this supposed to be about me. You know what, they gonna have to sell me how I am. And, you know, that was that. I was like, long as I'm high, I ain't gonna, I'm too high to fight somebody or just like, man, it ain't worth the time, you know. Just then for the court issue, I get there, you know, and I end up having to go back to the same class that I was like, man, this ain't for me. I'll do my part. I told my back, I told the judge the truth, you know, like, yes, sir, I smoke weed, you know. And we went from there to like a 30 day stand to stay at five north to like, you can tell it really take an effect on I me. Mean, I guess I was going to relay. I'm like, man, I'm sitting up here with all these crackheads, these smokers, these alcoholics. And like day one, I was sitting there like, man, don't nobody say nothing. I didn't really say it to nobody, but all the bitches were trying to catch hold to me. Like, man, talk to me. You know, it was like, man, I don't know you. I ain't trying to talk to you or nothing. But one guy in particular stuck out was uh, Ronald Steve. Uh, when he came to me, he was like, you need to do this, you need to do that. That's where the trigger hit. You know, and I tried to do like professional as I could, just cause I'm like, I got all this going on. And it's like, wow, man, I can't afford to hit this guy because I just got in this veterans court. I don't need no trouble. So I'm sitting there looking at all of this time, and it was like, wow, still 25 years. It was more than that, you know, from 75 to 25. And it was like, wow, if I hit this guy, I'm probably going to do time, you know. Sure enough, you know, I wanted to hit so bad, I just like walked out from him, you know, and I was cool. And then the next thing you know, he come approach me again, just like, you still gonna hit me? So I like, I talk, look here, sir, I have no respect for you, because you wanted something from me, you could have asked me, you know, or just talk to me like, come, people treat me like an animal, that's how I'm gonna act. And I'm like, one of the ones that really will fight you before I even have anything to say to you. My whole point when I say, leave me alone, you know, let me be. And it was like real crazy. Cause a lot of people started like really focusing in on me, like this guy done came in and like wow, we like his fight attitude as far as the older bitches that were there and they started looking up to me, which I never knew at that time. A couple of days later, I think maybe next day, I see Judge down, you know, Judge Snipes come down, um, PO Walkers come down and it was like they had a counseling a guy in a wheelchair and I was like, man, this dude ain't even in the wheelchair. He just heard it just be like do he life straight, but what he was saying was just, before it was the veteran court, he had got shot by the police over 50 or something, something like that, and he was in his chair for life, you know, and it tripped me out, I was like, maybe, he just saying that man, trying to scare me straight, you know, kind of like the movie, and he was just, he was telling the truth, and um, come to agreement with the judge, you know, he was like, work with me, you know, stay in my court, I don't want to see you go to jail, you know, from that day, I just basically I shut down with everybody at the VA until I talked to Tony Alexander, you know, and then things started getting better for me.